Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Sasuke gave his Sharingan to Naruto before he dies? Part 2. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Warden Author. Link is in the description. Also subscribe if you enjoy the video. Let's start the story. The say Haru was nervous would have been a gross understatement. He wanted to run. Run, and keep running. The only thing that kept him there was the feeling of his two teammates, and the captain's eyes on him. He wanted to be strong, make them proud, but this guy looked unlike anything he'd ever fought, it was intimidating, and a little scary. Eru's legs were shaking, his palms were sweating, and he was getting hotter and hotter as he got more and more nervous. He glanced up at Naruto, whose face was blank and unreadable. I secretly envy the welled up inside him, he wished he could be cool and collected all the time. He shifted his gaze to Sakura who looked a bit worried, oddly enough this caused Haru's envy of Naruto to grow, Sakura looked worried why couldn't Naruto worry about him. He turned back to look at his enemy. The black holes where he should have had eyes made him extremely uneasy. So he resorted to the only thing he knew, he dropped his gaze to the man's waist. Uri gripped Naruto's heart as he watched Haru. He wasn't ready for this, Naruto knew that. Haru's close combat skills had improved during the two months he'd been with Sakura and Naruto, but not by much. He had the demon win so that would help a bit, but he still wasn't a very good fighter. This was going to be interesting. He watched as the two squirt off, eyeing each other waiting for the other to make a move. The black-eyed man's fingers twitched. Haru whipped the demon wind off his back, drawing and opening it up in a single move. He threw the large weapon at his opponent and raced at him drawing a kunai. Black eyes ducked the spinning weapon and came up running. Haru snatched the blade out of the air as it arsed and came back to him, wielding the demon wind in his right hand and the kunai in his left, he clashed with his enemy. The man caught both of his wrists to stop his attack. Almost instantly Haru felt his energy levels drop. He jumped off his feet and planted them on the man's chest pushing off. The man's grip on his wrist broke and he sailed 15 feet before landing on his back. Nice move, praised Naruto, as Haru dragged himself back to his feet as black eyes charged him. Haru desperately threw the shuriken at the man, trying to keep him at bay. The man simply dodged around it and continued his advance, Haru leapt away trying to put distance between them. He couldn't afford to have to make contact with him, his touch seemed to drain his energy. The man followed him. Haru caught the shuriken and snapped it close just in time to block an attack. Haru looked back in his eyes and instantly regretted it, they made him so nervous. He pushed away, backing up even more, the man didn't follow this time. Haru sagged a bit, the chakra the man had drained had taken a toll on him, he needed to end this quickly. Haru is on the retreat, said Kakashi he needs to go on the offensive, Naruto glanced up at his sensei before returning his gaze back to the fight. But we know that Haru's combat skills aren't that great, he said, he's going to need to do something drastic. Naruto leaned against the railing absentmindedly scratching the bandage side of his face. He hadn't had the chance to change them during the second test, and they were really dirty. But he couldn't do anything about it now, Haru was fighting and wasn't doing well at all. Haru threw the shuriken at the man again trying to see if he could throw him off balance. Don't you have any other tricks? Asked the man as he leapt over it. Haru gritted his teeth. I have to do it, he thought, but I'm still not very good at it. I could mess up, I could get hurt, just as he decided not to do it, a scene flashed through his mind. Flashback, Haru ran through the woods and the enemy ninja shot on his trail. This was not good, he could get away. His toe caught a rock and with a cry of pain he fell to the ground. He turned over and gazed at the ninja in fear as they stood over him, weapons gleaming in the subtle sunlight that crept through the trees. One of them carried a long pole arm with a crescent blade draped over his shoulder. Haru watched him raise it over his head and closed his eyes waiting for the end. He was meant with a grunt of pain. Snapping his eyes back open he saw a person standing in front of him in a blood-red shirt and shaggy blonde hair. Naruto? He said, stunned. What are you doing here? Naruto turned to look over his shoulder, in his eye Haru saw a look of disgust. Drawing his two kunai, Naruto charged directly at the men. In 30 seconds the men were on the ground, of them dead or quickly approaching it. Naruto cleaned his blades on the clothing and sheathed them before turning to Haru and helping him up. Why are you here? Asked Haru. Naruto said nothing, he was just staring into the sky. What if you got hurt, what if they had taken you prisoner, what if, as ninja, we are not allowed the luxury of what if, Naruto cut across to him. Haru fell silent. Do not say that phrase again, all it will do is cause you to hesitate. If you hesitate on a mission, someone's going to end up dead. Haru looked at the ground ashamed of himself. Naruto finally looked at him. There you are ninja, in wearing the headband on your forehead you've accepted the mantle of the Hidden Leaf Village, said Naruto you, and I are Genin, the future of our village. We don't have time to screw around, we must advance and take the defense of our village onto our shoulders and help Kakashi-sensei. Never hesitate again. 
then flashback, it didn't take a genius to know that Naruto had been thinking about the time he'd hesitated while fighting Haku with Sasuke. Haru's resolve hardened. No. He thought no dwelling on what might happen he sheathed the kunai and caught the demon wind. Then threw it with all his might. It arsed high into the air, too high. While everyone, including his opponent, watched the shuriken, Naruto and Kakashi watched Haru flash through hand signs. Then he sank into the ground. Earth Taipa. Said Kakashi. The black-eyed man watched the demon wind fly high over his head before turning back to Haru with a jeer on his lips. It died on his tongue however when he saw the young man was gone. Then to everyone's disbelief ten Harus raised out the ground. Earth clones, said Naruto to Sakura when she gave him a look of confusion. Realization dawned on her and she looked back down at the match. The black-eyed man didn't seem to know what to do. He gazed around trying to find the real one. Having, said one. Some, said another one. Trouble said a third, but they said they said it in such quick succession, it came out having some trouble. Naruto watched as the clones converged on the man, all wielding kunai. There was a massive dust cloud as the man destroyed some of them, but when it all cleared, Haru stood triumphant. Hayate walked over and knelt next to the man and checked him. The winner is Harumuri, he said. Woohoo! yelled Sakura. Naruto nodded in approval as Haru looked up at them. He soon joined them on the catwalk looking tired but happy. Naruto turned to face him, a small smile playing on his lips. He stuck out his hand, Haru let out a small gasp before talking Naruto's hand in a handshake. They heard the board on the wall start to cycle through names again, they all turned to look at it. It ended with Zaku of the Sound Village and Shino Aburam. The two leapt to the floor. How does he plan to fight with his arms in a sling? Thought Haru aloud. Well, well, said Zaku, it looks like I've got a little movement in this one. He pulled his left arm out of the sling and pointed it at Shino. Shino didn't so much as draw his hands out of his jacket pockets. Without warning Zaku blasted a huge sound wave at Shino. When the dust cleared Shino stood tall, bugs covering his entire body. Bug gross, said Sakura what is he? In the village hidden in the leaf there is a clan of bug masters, said Kakashi the Aburam. When one of them is born they enter a secret pact with the insects, he provides them with a nest and food and in return they fight for him. A nest and food? Asked Haru what do you mean? He gulped, having a good idea of what Kakashi was talking about. His body and his chakra, said Kakashi. Though he did show it, Naruto wanted to throw up, the thought made him nauseous. The insects float off Shino and swarms Aku. Naruto turned away and leaned on the rail crossing his arms over his chest. It's over, he said. No sooner than he finished, Zaku let out a terrible scream as the bugs swarmed over him, devouring his chakra. That was so gross, said Sakura. Naruto gazed around and saw that that was the general belief. Zaku was carted off by the medical corporation. After a brief intermission, the board started cycling names again. It ended on the shinobi in the stupid cat-eared hood from the sand village and Haru's opponent's teammate. The sand ninja, Kenkuro, took the large thing wrapped in bandages off his back holding it out to his side. His opponent attacked him and threw a single punch which Kenkuro easily blocked. Then the guy's arm snaked up Kenkuro's. In no time at all the man had his lips wrapped around Kenkuro with one arm wrapped around his neck. Oh man, said Sakura, first a human bug hive, now this. Naruto could help but agree with her. There was a loud crack and Naruto knew Kankuro's neck had just been broken. Hei took a step forward like he was going to stop the fight. Then Kankuro twitched and head spun a 180. Haru made a wrenching sound. Then the thing Kankuro had dropped burst open, revealing a second Kankuro. The first Kankuro sprouted four more arms for a total of six and wrapped them tightly around his enemy. After a few seconds of struggling, the man gave, and the match ended. Geez, muttered Naruto one weirdo after another. The board stopped one of the two names, and Naruto glanced up at it. Not good, he thought, Ino and Sakura, despite what they said, the two still cared for each other. Sakura and Ino both seemed to have frozen. The glance at each other seemed to hesitate before the looks hardened. They joined each other on the ground glaring at each other. All right, said Haid, you may begin. Sakura raced straight at Ino and threw a hard punch at her face. Ino dodged her head out of the way, but before she could counter, Sakura grabbed the back of her head and yanked it down at the same time bringing her right knee up hard. Ino's head snapped back and she stumbled back a look of shock on her face. Because Team 7 hadn't spent a lot of time around the rest of the rookie Sakura's growth was wildly unknown. So the look of shock on everyone's faces came as no surprise to Naruto as he glanced around, a small smirk on his face and a feeling of pride in his chest. Sakura kicked Ino hard in the gut. Ino backed up clutching at her stomach. How? She gasped out, how did you get so strong? Sakura smirked. How? 
It's called hard work you know, after the land of the waves, my total inability to do anything at all, spurred me to get stronger, so that the next time we face an enemy I'll be a help, not a liability. With that she started hand signs. Though no one but Kakashi knew it, Sakura was a powerful Jinjutsu type ninja with a water affinity. Because of her great chakra control, she could cast water jutsu, even if there was no water around, by simply turning her chakra in the water for the jutsu. However it was significantly weaker than if she used nature's water. Her chakra still got the job done though. Water style. Water bullets. She held her hands open towards Eno and launched massive bullets of water at Eno, 20 in rapid succession. Eno dropped to one knee. Sakura stood over her, a kunai in her hand. Okay, Sakura, she said, I give, you win. Naruto gave a small fist pump by his hip, the gesture was missed by all, but Kakashi. Naruto glanced at the rest of the rookies, they all had looks of amazement on their faces. It didn't surprise him, Ino was widely considered to be one of the best female ninja in their age group. However Sakura had beaten her with minimal effort. Sakura held her hand out to Ino and helped her up. The two watched each other for a minute. Sakura gave her a smile, a real smile. Just hang in there, Ino, she said if I can do it, so can you. Together they climbed the stairs and joined the rest of the Leaf Genin. Ino left to join her team, and Sakura joined Naruto and Haru. Well two out of three, said Kakashi we'll go for a sweep, be ready Naruto. They all gave him a small smile. Right, he said. Suddenly Sakura slumped against the wall and slid down it to the ground. Naruto knelt next to her. You okay? He asked in a quiet voice. Sakura gave him a reassuring smile. I'm okay, she said, the chakra I used for the Jinjutsu in the forest hadn't fully replenished when I used the water jutsu. I'm just tired. She gave him another tired smile, touched by his concern. Naruto nodded returning her smile with a small one of his own, before his stood up, he pulled her into a hug, and quietly, so only she could hear, said, I had faith in you, I knew you would win. That said, he stood up and stepped back up the railing to watch the next match. The two opponents had already been chosen. Tenten and Tamari. Tenten leapt away and her team started cheering, loudly. Naruto had to cover his ears. The two stood staring at each other. Tamari goaded Tenten into attacking. Tenten leapt into the air and threw six shuriken at Tamari, they flew straight and on target, then suddenly they stopped and dropped to the ground. Naruto blinked for a minute, then it dawned on him. When he thought. It's over, Haru looked at him in shock. How can you say that? He demanded, Tenten is a fellow leaf ninja, we must believe in her. Naruto looked at him. Don't be stupid Haru, he said, believe me, I would like to see Tenten win. It's bad luck really Tamari is the one person so far who could actually beat her. It's over Haru, just watch. Tamari unfurled her fan and swung it causing a huge vortex that lifted Tenten into the air. Wind sliced at the helpless girl before she fell hard onto Tamari's collapsed fan. The winner is. Tamari, said Hayate. An evil grin crossed Tamari's face. She tossed Tenten at the weapon she had used. Lee leapt into the battle area and caught her. Nice catch, she said. Now take that pathetic piece of garbage out of here. What did you say? He demanded. He gently set Tenten down and looked like he was about to charge the girl when Naruto suddenly appeared in front of him, his arm stretched out in front of Lee, his one-eyed gaze locked onto Tamari. Everyone gasped. When did he get so fast? Thought Sakura. Naruto thought Kakashi. What are you playing at? Lee, don't, said to Naruto she's not worth your time, take Tenten to Gai-sensei. Lee was stunned by Naruto's sudden appearance. Uh, right, he said, and carried her off. Naruto stood and glared at Tamari. She broke eye contact and turned to join her teammates, Naruto followed Lee. When they reached the top Kakashi pulled Naruto aside. Naruto, what are you doing? He demanded. What do you mean? Asked Naruto, confused. Your unknown growth is an advantage, he said. Why show it now in a rush to stop Lee? Naruto hesitated. Don't be so hasty to show off, wait until the match. Yes, sir, Naruto said dejectedly. Kakashi gave him a one-eyed smile and patted him on the shoulder. I know you're eager to test yourself, he said gently. But don't let that eagerness compromise you. Naruto nodded and walked back to Haru a bit ashamed of himself. Everything alright? Asked Haru. Yeah, said Naruto quietly. Sakura stood up and joined them. Are you sure you're okay to be moving around Sakura? She gave him a smile. I'm fine, she said. Besides, they're getting towards the end. I don't want to miss your match, she gave him a small smile and slipped her hand into his and gave it a small squeeze. Sakura knew it was the only show of affection Naruto would allow right now. Shikamaru and Kin were the next two to fight. Their fight started off slow, but that was to be expected with anything involving Shikamaru. Kin threw two senbin at Shikamaru who quickly dodged them. There were bells attached. That simple trick. Asked Naruto. Next she'll throw senbin with bells and senbin without. 
Shikamaru started dodging all the senbin before he suddenly froze. Injutsu? Said Sakura. What? Gasped Naruto, snapping his gaze up to Sakura. It looks like this is one that affects his ears, she said, I guess that's surprising considering what village she's from. Kin through three senbin, Shikamaru managed to cover up just in time. It's amazing he can even move, she said. Suddenly all action stopped. Kin's face had a look of horror on it. He got her, said Naruto. Shikamaru pulled a shuriken out of his pouch which was mirrored by Kin. Are you crazy? Demanded Kin. Oh come on it'll be fun, said Shikamaru like a game of chicken, let's see who's ducks first. He threw the shuriken at her. The two shuriken raced at their targets, just as it reached him, Shikamaru bent over backwards. Kin mirrored him and bashed her head on the wall. The wise shinobi properly scouts the battlefield and is always aware of his position on it, he said. The match was over. After he joined the rest, the wall on the board began to cycle through names until finally it landed on Naruto and Kiba. It's us against the kid Akamaru. Shouted Kiba. He leapt down and ran to the far side waiting for Naruto. Naruto straightened and started walking towards the stairs. Kakashi stopped him. Naruto, he said, only use it as a last resort, but I'm giving you permission to use it. Naruto gave him a short nod and continued to the stairs. As he left Sakura was giving Kakashi an uneasy look. All around them were words of pity for Naruto. Oh man, Naruto doesn't have a chance, said Ino. Hiba is so lucky, said Choji. And Kurenai looked pretty smug, like the match was already over. Don't worry Sakura, he smiled. He is ready, Naruto, and I haven't just been goofing off for the last six months. Haru was glancing back and forth between them confused. He had faith in you, both of you. Now I have faith in him. They both nodded and turned to watch. Now your chance Naruto, he thought show them all how much you've grown. Naruto stood across from Kiba, his face ever stoic. Sorry Naruto, he said nothing personal, with that he dropped onto all fours, his teeth and fingernails elongating. Ninja art. Beast mimicry. He vanished only to reappear with his elbow buried deep in Naruto's gut. Naruto's body absorbed a shot and he flew several feet landing hard on his back. Oh no. Exclaimed Haru, in the five months he'd known him, Haru had never seen Naruto take a solid hit. Naruto was still for a second. Kita was about to turn to hate when he stirred. He turned back to Naruto with a look of disbelief on his face. Naruto was up and running, both kunai in his hand. Kiba let out a growl and charged at Naruto drawing one of his own kunai. Naruto swung his right hand, Kiba ducked that kunai and stabbed with his own. Naruto blocked it with the kunai on his left. They disengaged. So, I see you picked up a little bit of ability, said Kiba, you came a long way since the academy. Naruto couldn't help but smirk as he sheathed his kunai, this didn't go missed by Kiba. You have no idea, said Naruto how right you are. Naruto started flashing through hand signs so quickly that Kiba could keep up. Higher style. Phoenix flower jutsu. He yelled. What? Exclaimed Kiba. The 15 small fireballs converged on him. Kiba barely escaped. Asuma looked at Kakashi in shock. That movie, he said that's the fire jutsu of the Uchiha clan. So how is Naruto knowing it? Kakashi gave him a one-eyed smile. Oh, you'll see, he replied. Kiba came up charging and drew two smoke bottoms. Let's go Akamaru. He said and threw the smoke bombs. No one could see anything. Akamaru leapt into the smoke, using his nose to track Naruto. As the smoke started to clear, Kiba charged kunai in hand. Naruto? Yelled Sakura and moved to jump down. Stop Sakura. Said Kakashi. Sakura was stunned, Kakashi had never raised his voice to her like that. Have faith in Naruto. Sakura climbed down off the railing. Just as the smoke completely cleared Kiba was in Naruto's face and plunged the kunai in his stomach. Naruto? Sakura yelled again. A look of shock was on everyone's faces. Everyone in the building heard the distinct drip, drip, drip of water. The look of shock crossed Kiba's face as he watched water flow out of the wound in Naruto's stomach. Then the water clone collapsed. Kiba searched frantically for him. Where is he? He said aloud. His answer was a hard punch across the face. Kiba stumbled back. When the hell did you learn to use water clones and fire jutsu for that matter? Naruto smirked. I wouldn't worry about that right now if we're you, said Naruto. Hein, said Kiba, but at least tell me how you used the water clone. Fair enough, said Naruto Kiba, look around you, at all the water on the floor. It's left over from the time of Sakura Ino with her water bullets. When you threw your smoke bombs I simply used the water on the floor and created a water clone. Kiba growled, baring his fangs. Then he sprinted at Naruto. Tunneling fang. He shouted and began to rapidly spin. Naruto didn't have time to react, Kiba hit him right in the chest, tearing his shirt to shreds. After being bored for 10 seconds Naruto finally managed to push Kiba to the side a bit and slip away. As soon as he broke contact, he dropped to one knee clutching at his stomach. 
Diba flipped out of his attack and stood tall with a triumphant look on his face. I gotta say, he said I'm actually impressed with you even still standing, Naruto glared at him, his cobalt eyes burning a hole in him. Kiba took a step back and slipped his hand into his pouch, drawing out two food pills. He tossed onto Akamaru before popping one in his own mouth. Let's go Akamaru. Man beast, clones. He shouted as Akamaru leapt on his back, in a flash there were two Kibas. They ran at Naruto on all fours. Fang over Fang. They shouted as Naruto leapt out of the way. Kiba came to a stop. You know you're pretty pathetic, he said with all the honesty in the world. It takes you three tries to pass the academy graduation exam, which you only passed in the end on a technicality. Then you botch every d rank mission you go on, only succeeding those missions because of Sasuke, and then, Bakashi turned to Kurinai. Kurinai, whatever happens to Kiba, you cannot hold it against Naruto, he said, Kiba is going to bring on himself. Kurinai looked at him surprised. Excuse me? She said. Naruto is about to kill Kiba, said Kakashi, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. I fail to see how that's going to happen, she replied, he can't stand. Naruto's emotions are buried, not gone, said Kakashi. Kiba is about to unleash something he'll never forget. Sakura was just as confused as Kurinai. She gazed at the two talking, and realization dawned on her. Kiba that idiot, she said, is he trying to get killed? You let Sasuke die, you did nothing to help him, as he defended you, finished Kiba. Naruto's face darkened. Take it back, said Naruto darkly. Kiba laughed. What's that? He said. Take back what you said. Shouted Naruto. Tore the remains of his shirt off. His entire torso was covered in fear like he'd been stabbed by hundreds of thin weapons, needle scars. He vanished only to reappear right in front of Kiba and smashed him to the ground. He rained punch after punch into Kiba's face. The second Kiba ran at Naruto and knocked him off Kiba. Naruto skidded to a halt on one knee. Kiba dragged himself to his feet. Rage burning in his eyes. This is getting intense, Shikamaru said Naruto is completely different from when we were in the academy. You said it and replied I was a bit nervous as to what was going to happen next. The three Jaun and Sensei moved together in case they had to intervene. Naruto glanced up at Kakashi with a question in his eye. Go ahead Naruto, he replied you're ready, show them your power. The third Hokage had been watching all the fights with mild interest, this fight however he'd been paying the closest attention to. He'd promised Minato he'd watch over the boy, he wanted to see how far he'd come. He'd been pleasantly surprised at many points in the match, but in Kakashi's words, he sat up a bit straighter. In fact everyone in the building seemed to be watching the closing. Kakashi, what are you talking about? Asked Asuma. Just watch, said Kakashi. Keep your eyes on Naruto, he's about to surprise you. Naruto slowly untied his headband and laid it across his knee. Then with a glance at Kiba, his hands moved to the bandages on his face. Kiba wanted to attack, but his curiosity got the better of him, he didn't move. Sasuke thought Naruto lend me your strength, help me, in this disparate hour. Thefinal bandage was removed. Naruto tossed it away and picked his headband back up and tied it around his forehead. Then he stood up straight, proud and tall, his earlier rage forgotten. After 10 months of closure, Naruto snapped his right eye open unveiling Sharingan. The entire building let out a gasp. The Hokage leapt to his feet. Sharingan, but that's. If any of you ever wondered why I insisted on continuing Naruto's train myself, said Kakashi now you know. Sharingan. Exclaimed Kurinai, but how? When? In the land of the waves, said Kakashi, Sasuke didn't die protecting Naruto. He died as they fought side by side. During the fight Naruto lost his right eye, pierced by Senban, as he defended Sasuke's body. After the fight was over, Sasuke gave Naruto Sharingan as a gift of friendship and brotherhood. The village grieves over the loss of the Achiha clan, while Naruto grieves the loss of Sasuke Achiha, the closest thing he's ever had to a brother. The village slanders him for allowing the last of the Achiha to die, while Naruto punishes himself for not being able to protect a comrade. In fact I believe Shikamaru here is the only one who's ever taken the time to check on Naruto. Every single one of them looked ashamed of themselves. Kakashi turned his gaze to Sakura, who was beaming with pride for her sensei and for her teammate. No matter how hard he tried, Kiba couldn't tear his gaze away from Naruto's right eye. It entranced him, drew him in. He took a step towards him, then back. Then shook his head. Naruto copied it all perfectly. Kiba's cracked, and Kurinai Naruto's got the match in the bag, Kiba's thoughts aren't even his own. He finally shook himself free of the red eye's piercing gaze and attacked using his Akamaru and his fang over fang. Naruto sidestepped it and brought his right leg up in a hard kick, catching the real Kiba in the chest. The jutsu broke almost instantly as Kiba crashed to the ground. Naruto calmly settled over Kiba and put a kunai to his throat, Akamaru had no choice but to back down. 
They ate left to Kiba, and Naruto checked Kiba for vital signs. Because his opponent is unable to continue, the winner is Naruto Uzumaki, said Haid. Beru, Sakura, and Lee all burst into cheers. Naruto stood up, with a tired sigh he pulled his headband down over his Sharingan. He turned and walked toward the stairs, tucking his hands into his pockets. He reached his team, where he received congratulations from all of the Leaf Genin. Leave it to you to have something like that under your belt said Shikamaru. That was awesome, said Haru. Why didn't you tell me you had the Sharingan? I wasn't allowed to reveal it until now, replied Naruto. After the rest of the rookie nine left him, Sakura pulled Naruto into a hug. Great job Naruto, she said. Naruto hesitated for a minute, then returned it, holding her tightly. Very good Naruto, said Kakashi. Using the hypnotic eye to make Kiba think he wanted to use Fang over Fang, even tricked him into being on the left where he'd be open. Naruto smirked. Thanks, he said. Here, said Kakshi, pulling off his gown and vest and draping it over his shoulders. Wear this until we can get you a shirt. Thanks again, said Naruto, slipping his arms through it and zipping it up. The next two opponents were Hinata and Niji Hayuga. They stood across from each other and Hinata looked terrified, scared like she wanted to run. Then she took a quick glance at Naruto and her resolve seemed to harden. They both took the same stance. Of course, said Lee the Hayuga style, that is why their stances are the same. They are both from the Hayuga clan. The two charged each other striking hard with chakra bursts from each of the strikes. Naruto pulled the headband from his Sharingan. It's amazing, he said they release sharp bursts of chakra driving them into their opponent's body. Niji finally landed a blow on her throat, causing her to back up. Clutching at her chest. The resolve drained from her face for a split second before returning. She charged him again, taking a hard shot right to the heart. Damn it, said Naruto she fought a good fight, but it's over. He pulled the headband over the Sharingan. Then a gasp escaped his lips, she was getting back up. No, 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 he said stay down, don't do anything crazy. She dragged herself to her feet. Niji let out a cry of rage and charged. In a flash Naruto disappeared only to reappear right in front of Niji. The fight is over Niji, he said. Niji scoffed and left the arena floor. Naruto turned and ran to Hinata, he was soon joined by Kurinai who knelt down and yanked her jacket open. She's going into cardiac arrest, she said. Naruto leapt out of the way as the medical corporation raced in. They had her up and gone in 15 seconds. Naruto returned to his team where Sakura wrapped her arms around Naruto's right arm. Her previous inhibitions were forgotten. The board on the wall scanned through names and came to a stop on Rock Lee and Choji. Lee jumped to the ground and waited for Choji to reach him. Once he did, Lee gave him a deep bow. It is an honor to face a fellow ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village, he said. That said he took his headband off his waist and tied it around his forehead. You know, said Naruto, I'm liking this Lee guy more and more. Sakura smiled. It was so nice to see Naruto opening up, he was smiling a bit more, not a big smile. The fight between Lee and Choji was pretty lame really, Choji tried to use his human boulder jutsu which Lee stopped with a hard kick. Choji deflated, he was tired and a little scared. He charged Lee, Lee kicked him once, sending him flying, and the match ended. Uh, was all Naruto could say. Lee helped Choji up and carried him to the catwalk with the rest. My apologies, he said, I didn't mean to embarrass you. No, that's okay, said Choji, neither one of us held on, and you were the victor. No need to apologize for that. Naruto couldn't help but smile. The last match was Dosu vs Gara. Gara stood across from Dosu with his arms crossed and the gourd on his back pouring sand. So that's what's in that gourd, mumbled Naruto. It's sand. Dosu charged Naruto, pulling back his sleeve and revealing his weird glove. He punched Gara. The sand rose to Gara's defense. Then it wrapped around Dog's arm. And covered his body. Sand coffin. Said Gara. Dosu struggled trying to get free. Gara raised his open hand pointing the palm at Dosu. Sand burial. The sand crushed Dosu, Sakura turned away hiding her face in Naruto's chest. The sand retreated back into the gourd, there was no sign of Dosu at all, Gara left the battlefield. Alright, and with that the third test preliminaries are complete, said Haid, can I get all the victors in a single file line in front of me? After they did, as they were asked, the Hokage addressed them. First off, congratulations for passing the first round, he said. The finals will be held in one month, so use that time to train and learn new techniques. I wish you all the best of luck, you are dismissed. Naruto turns to his team. We have one month, he said. You'll all be ready, said Kakashi, but it'll be a long road. Naruto's eyes slowly opened, as he awoke, he rolled over and looked at the clock. It was 7 in the morning. He sat up and rubbed his eyes and stretched. Then he climbed out of bed and headed for the bathroom. Turning on the water he climbed into the shower and let the hot liquid pour over his body, relaxing his sore muscles. 
he hadn't really enjoyed his shower the night before, he'd be too tired to do anything but get in, get clean, and get out. Now he lets it loosen the tension in his body and soothe his aching muscles. As he stood under the shower the battle with Kiba played over and over in his head. Why had it been so tough, sure Kiba was good, but Naruto knew he wasn't on Naruto's level, hell there were only a few at the prelims that were. Niji, that boy Gara, and maybe Lee. So why had he had so much trouble, he even had to resort to Sharingan which he'd hoped to save for the finals. Unable to find an answer to his question he punched the tiled wall of his shower with a low curse. Deciding his shower was no longer relaxing, Naruto climbed out and toweled himself dry. Then he wrapped the towel low around his waist and exited the bathroom. He went down the hall and into his kitchen looking for something to eat. He opened his fridge and decided that eating was out of the question, he needed to go to the store. There was a knock on his front door. He walked over and opened it, closing his right eye. It was Sakura. Oh, hey Sakura, he said, completely forgetting about his almost total nakedness. She noticed it almost immediately. Naruto, she said, shouldn't you put some clothes on? Confusion crossed Naruto's face as he looked down. Seeing his scantily clad body Naruto blushed slightly. Ah sorry, come in, he said stepping aside to allow her entrance I'll be right back. He left the room and went to his own where he quickly dressed in his blood red tee and black pants, he tied his headband around his right eye and left the room. He walked back out in the living room to find Sakura sitting on his couch patiently waiting for him, it was then Naruto noticed the change. You got your hair cut, he said softly, sitting down next to her. She nodded. She said you like it. She asked. Naruto could tell from the look on her face she wanted him to approve. Yeah I do, he said honestly it looks really nice. She smiled and put her head on his shoulder. Are you going to see him soon? She asked. He nodded. Deciding to push her luck a little, Sakura asked something she'd never asked before. Can I come? Naruto was quiet for a long time, so long in fact Sakura was about to withdraw her request when he spoke up. Yeah, I'd like that, and I think he would too, said Naruto. Sakura smiled. They soon got up and left knowing the sooner Naruto visited him, the sooner Sakura could get him out and about. Sakura wrapped her arms around Naruto's and laid her head on his shoulder. They walked through the village, keeping to themselves not paying any attention to the looks of interest they were getting. They weren't dating, they were sleeping with each other, they were simply best friends, and this was comfortable to them. Their journey took about half an hour, but when they arrived they stood at Sasuke's grave for quite a while. Finally Sakura sank to her knees and whispered to herself. Sasuke, thank you for all you did for me, and Naruto, she said, I'm sorry I haven't visited sooner, but Naruto needed time alone with you, time to heal, he's getting there Sasuke, as I'm sure you've seen. Please help him heal, help him let go of the burden of guilt he's placed on his own shoulders. I know you bear him no animosity, I'm not sure how I do, but I do. He refuses to forgive himself, help him. Her prayer to Sasuke finished, she stood and returned to Naruto's side. Naruto was silent, reading the words on Sasuke's grave like he had a million times before. The battle on the bridge played in his mind, what could he have done differently, he could have stopped the Senban, he could have stopped Haku quicker, if only he had trained harder, focused more on getting stronger, and less on ramen, Sasuke would still be here. Sakura watched, as Naruto's face grew more and more painful. She knew what he was doing, blaming himself again, coming up with all the things he could have done. She'd been around him enough to know when he was sinking into depression. Deciding to take another risk, she slipped her hand in his and laced their fingers together, she gave his hand a slight squeeze. He snapped out of his thoughts and looked at her startled. She gave him a soft smile and started to pull him away. Naruto cast one last glance back at the headstone and followed her. He half expected her to release his hand once she got him away for the grave, but she didn't. She held it firmly guiding them both back to the village square. Once there they wandered around the market looking at all the new items the vendors had. Naruto was standing back a bit watching Sakura look at jewelry when an old man approached him. Anything I can help you with son? The man asked. Naruto looked at the man, his smile seemed real enough which was weird, Naruto never got looks like that. You don't know who I am, do you? He asked. Oh I know perfectly well who you are, said the man. And you still talk to me? Asked Naruto, a bit stunned. Of course, said the man like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Why? Asked Naruto even more stunned. The young man said, I see you around the village quite a bit. Always sulking, always down. You don't fight the insults, you just take it, never once fighting back. Naruto to me says you didn't let the Ichiha die, that you fought with him, and that Sharingan in your right eye tells me that he meant more to you and you to him than anybody else in this whole world. But you still fight bearing the weight of Ichiha's death on your shoulders, unable to let him go. Son, until you do you will never be able to harness your true strength. Realization washed over Naruto like a wave breaking on the shore. Until he let go of Sasuke, he'd be unable to fight to his full potential. 
That was why he'd had so much trouble with Kiba, he'd been unable to fight with a clear head. A part of him still focused on Sasuke's death. He was distracted. What happens if that happens on a mission soon? The old man asked, your friends and comrades would be put in danger. Naruto was ashamed, he'd once told Haru to never hesitate. All the while being a hypocrite. He glanced over at Sakura, picturing her dead because he'd hesitated, the thought scared him, he felt as much pain thinking about Sakura dying as he had when Sasuke actually had. He looked away and clamped his eyes shut. It was all he could do to stem the flow of tears that he felt threatening to fall. After a minute he got himself under control and looked back at the man. The man was still smiling that kinda smile, something about that smile told Naruto he knew exactly what Naruto was going through. Naruto glanced back over at Sakura, she was chatting happily with the shop owner. She looked over and saw him looking over at her. Her grin grew even wider, she excitedly waved him over. A small smile playing on his lips he politely excused himself and walked over to Sakura. Look, she said. She was holding a picture in her hands. Naruto's face lit up with recognition. It was him and Sasuke as young children. He remembered the day. Sasuke had a jab at him after class one day and Naruto had gone to confront him about it. They ended up just standing side by side on the dock watching the sunset. Someone must have stumbled upon them and taken the picture. Naruto's smile got a little larger as he took it out of her hands. Would you like me to do it for you? He asked. Confusion played across Sakura's face. I thought you might like to have it, she said. Naruto shook his head, it was time for him to start trying to let go of Sasuke. I have all I need, he said, pointing to the headband on his face. Here, he handed it back to her and turned to the man running the stall. He handed him the labeled price and thanked him. Then Naruto motioned for Sakura to let him flow. She did so and soon had her hand intertwined in his. He looked down at her, she was looking fondly at the picture. One who didn't know what had gone on two minutes beforehand would have thought they were the best of friends. Sakura must have felt him staring because she looked up at him, a smile on her face. I'm proud of you, she whispered. Naruto looked at her with a question in his eyes. You're trying aren't you? You're trying to move on. Naruto nodded. I am, he said. Sakura gave his hand a squeeze and together they walked down the street to meet Kakashi and Haru for training. When they reached training field 7, they weren't surprised to find that Haru was the only one waiting for them, despite their being half an hour late. Haru waved at them from where he was sitting against a tree, sharpening the blades of the demon wind. Naruto and Sakura slowly made their way over to him. When they reached him he smiled up at them and slipped his shuriken into its sheath on his back. Naruto helped him to his feet and turned to find Kakashi strolling into the field. Yo, he said. Once he reached them he gave the instructions for the training. To jutsu only, oh, and if you don't mind I thought I'd join you. The three genin looked at each other before shrugging and nodding as one. Alright then, scatter. Said Kakashi, and the four broke off. Eru and Sakura met each other in the middle of the field, each wielding kunai. Sakura blocked an overhead slash and countered with a hard kick to Haru's middle. Haru brought his other arm across his stomach and blocked the kick stumbling a bit. But Sakura was unable to capitalize on the opening because Naruto flew straight over Haru's head and launched a flurry of three kicks, the last one being an axe kick that drove Sakura to the ground hard. Naruto landed in a crouch and leaped straight into the air to avoid a kick from Haru. He flipped backwards drawing his two kunai and landed in a low crouch, with both his arms held straight out to his side, the kunai held in reverse grips. Haru pulled the demon wind off his back and flipped it open. He threw it straight at Naruto who vanished from sight and reappeared right in front of Haru. He put a foot on Haru's knee and brought his other leg up in a knee strike. Haru fell backwards right past Sakura who was now up and charged her kunai in hand. Naruto, unable to defend himself in midair, took a hard kick to the solar plexus. He hit the ground hard gasping for breath. Sakura stood over him triumphantly, she brought her leg down in an axe kick which Naruto avoided by rolling to his left and flipping to his feet. He stared at his two opponents Sakura to his left and Haru to his right, they were locked in a stance still. It was then that Kakashi chose to appear. Right in the middle. Naruto didn't even hesitate, he charged Kakashi with his kunai. Kakashi blocked his first punch and countered with a hard kick, Naruto ducked the kick and delivered an elbow into Kakashi's stomach. Kakashi took the hit but didn't move. Naruto flipped away. Kakashi and Naruto stared each other down. Sakura and Haru were motionless, neither wanting to get caught in this fight. Faster than anyone could see, Naruto and Kakashi both pulled their hand bands from their faces unveiling their shuringans. They charged, the force of their blows created gusts of wind, it ended in a flash. Naruto, starting to get desperate, overextended. Kakashi caught his forearm and brought the boy crashing to the ground. Alright, he said that's it for today. It was getting late and he needed to let them get going. 
Naruto stood up after Kakashi got off of him and pulled his headband down over his face. Sakura walked over to the tree and picked up her picture. Then the three genin left the forest. They decided to eat dinner at Ichiraku's. Once they were sitting at the bar and their ramen was ordered, Sakura and Haru chatted while Naruto listened. They talked about the training they just had and more importantly, Kakashi and Naruto's fight. What possessed you to charge Kakashi-sensei like Naruto? Asked Haru. Naruto gave a short shrug. I wanted to test myself, he said. Well you got your butt kicked, said Haru. Naruto shrugged again and turned to the ramen AM had just sat down in front of him. After eating for a few minutes Naruto turned to look at his friends. They were chatting happily, smiling, and laughing at the things they were discussing. Sakura had scooted his stool closer to Naruto and was slightly leaning on him. After their ramen the three friends stood and began to head home. Naruto was in the middle, Sakura to his right, her left hand laced in his right and her right arm holding onto his bicep. Haru was to his left both hands behind his head. They decided to spend some time as a team at Naruto's house. They wanted to spend time together with just the three of them to breathe before really jumping into the hard training for the Chunin finals. They went up the stairs to his apartment and stepped into his small living room, after a few hours they all decided to crash in Naruto's living room. The Kashi Haddock sat at the village dango shop with his favorite type of dumpling in front of him. Long time no see, Kakashi, came a voice from behind him. He turned to see an elderly man with hair white as the snow and a red guy. A Master Jiraiya. He said, completely stunned. What are you doing here? You haven't been in the village in years. The man sighed and stepped around the table. Honestly I hadn't planned to come back this soon, but it's been taken out of my hands, Jiraiya said. You see, I've been keeping taps on that pain in the neck of Arachimaru ever since he left the village all those years ago. And now I know he's coming back to the village if he's not here already. Kakashi let out a gasp. Are you serious Master Jiraiya? He asked. I'm afraid that I am, he said, crossing his arms. So that's what brings you back? Asked Kakashi. Yes and no, said Jiraiya. I once made a promise to Minato and Kashina that I would watch over Naruto if anything happened to them. It's time I made good on my promise. Kakashi looked at him dumbfounded. Uh, uh, he stuttered. Kakashi, it's not my desire to steal your student, said Jiraiya. Just help with a technique here or there. I know there are many techniques you can still teach him. It's more than that, said Kakashi. I don't know if you're aware of it, but Naruto has recently received a Sharingan eye and two affinities. As near as I can tell, Naruto has three chakra affinities. 3. Ask Jiraiya, no Kakashi, that's not possible. I didn't think it was either, but Master Jiraiya he does I swear to you, said Kakashi. 3. You're sure? Ask Jiraiya. Yes, near, as far as I can tell, wind, lightning, and fire, said Kakashi, which brings me to my next point. I want to teach him Chidori, but his chakra control is still quite there. Jiraiya was silent for a while. I may have the perfect solution, said Jiraiya, the summoning will be the perfect way for him to focus his chakra. Perfect, said Kakashi. I let you take over with the training for the summoning, then I can teach him Chidori, and after that, well we'll see where it goes from there. Wait wait wait, Jiraiya suddenly burst out. Did you say Naruto has Sharingan? Yes, said Kakashi, running his hand over his forehead. Nine months ago, my team and I were on a mission in the land of waves. It went wrong, it went so wrong Jiraiya. We were attacked by a rogue ninja named Zabuza, him and his apprentice. Sasuke and Naruto engaged the apprentice in mortal combat. Sasuke was killed. With his last breath, he gave Naruto his Sharingan to replace the eye Naruto lost in the battle. Ever since then he's trained to use it. That's quite a story, said Jiraiya. It's all true, said Kakashi. No, I know, said Jiraiya Kakashi, Naruto has a long road ahead of him. Naruto is going to have to learn that because of who he is, he's going to have to spend his entire time watching his back. Kakashi ran a hand through his silver hair and let out a heavy sigh. I know, he said we'll just focus on his training for now. Good idea, said Jiraiya. We'll focus on the summoning for now, and then we'll have to see what happens. Naruto woke up with a stiff neck. Sat up straight on his couch and stretched trying to loosen his neck. He had spent the night on his couch and was now regretting it. He rubbed out his neck and walked toward the kitchen, being careful to step over Haru on the way there. After fishing a glass out of his cupboard he filled it with water from his tap and downed it in three gulps. It did little for his neck so he filled another glass and drank half of it. He walked out of the kitchen with the glass in hand just in time to find Haru stirring from his spot on the floor. Ah man, moaned Haru. What time is it? Naruto took a swig of water and looked at the clock. Just about noon, he said. Shit. Said Haru what time did we go to bed last night? I don't know, said Naruto. Like four maybe, he took another swig of water and walked down the hall towards his bedroom. He inched the door open and peered in. What he found left him completely speechless. 
Sakura lay in his bed, she was on her back, her pink hair splayed out around her. Naruto leaned on the doorframe watching the gentle rise and fall of her chest as she slumbered. He took another sip of water debating with himself whether or not to wake her. They had to meet Kakashi for training in two hours, and Naruto knew she would want to go home first. Hey, whispered Haru from behind him. I'm gonna head home, I'll see you for training. Naruto nodded and turned back to his sleeping teammate. Stealing himself, he approached her bedside and gently sat down. He lightly shook her shoulder. Sakura, it's time to wake up, he said. His soft emerald eyes fluttered open. Na Naruto? She asked, slightly confused. Yes, he said. It's about time to get up, it's already noon. Oh, okay, she said. I leave you to get dressed, he said, standing up and leaving the room, grabbing a change of clothes on his way out. He changed in the bathroom. He put on a pair of black pants and a midnight blue tee. He exited the bathroom just as Sakura was leaving his room. She gave him a soft smile. Sleep well? He asked her. She nodded. You have a comfortable bed, she replied. He smiled. I'm glad, he said we should swing by your place before going on to training. She nodded and together they left the apartment. They quickly made their way across the village, Sakura holding his right hand in her left, her right hand on his bicep. In time they made it to Sakura's house. You want to come in? She asked. He nodded and followed her inside. Oh, Naruto, said Aki, as he stepped in. We haven't seen you around here for quite a while. Yes yeah, sorry about that, he said, I've been kinda busy. Oh that's okay, replied Aki oh I see you took your bandages off, but you still wear your headband over your eye, are you still injured? No, you see I actually have Sasuke's Sharingan eye in my right eye, he said, I keep it covered because I can't deactivate it. Oh, I see, said Aki, a bit confused, well come, and have some tea. We can't mom, said Sakura, we have to meet Kakashi sensei for training. Oh okay fine, Aki just came back after, it's been too long since we saw Naruto. Sure mom, I will say Sakura, and with that the two young ninja left the Haruno home. They were met with a very unfamiliar sight upon entering their usual training field. Not only was Haru there waiting for them, but Kakashi, and with him was an old white-haired man. Naruto, said Kakashi, as they approached. You won't be training with the rest of the team, for now you're going to go with Master Jiraiya. He's got a couple he wants to teach you. Okay? Said Naruto, raising an eyebrow and looking at the old man. The man in question gave him a goofy smile. Alright, said Jiraiya, as he and Naruto stood next to the river. First I'll show you what I want you to learn. He quickly flashed through five signs before slamming his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu? He shouted. There was a cloud of smoke, and, as it cleared Naruto saw the old man standing on a red toad, wishing for a green and red skull. Take the scroll. Naruto did as he was instructed and unrolled it on the ground. That scroll is a contract with the summoning toads, explained Jiraiya passed down from earlier generations of ninja. Sign your name in your own blood and stamp the fingerprints of one hand under it. Then build up your chakra and slam it on the ground where you want to perform the summoning. The signs are boar, dog, bird, monkey, sheep. Naruto let out a heavy sigh as he drew one of his kunai off his hip and sliced open his right thumb. He quickly wrote his name and stamped his right fingerprints on the scroll beneath his name. Good, now do it, said Jiraiya in a stern voice. Stealing his resolve, Naruto quickly flashed through the five signs and slammed his palm on the ground. Ninja art. Summoning Jutsu. He yelled. He disappeared in a cloud of smoke, only to reappear standing on a blue toad with yellow stripes running down his back. Amazing thought Jiraiya to summon a toad that size on his first try. No one has done that since Minato. This boy, with Sharingan and the right determination, could easily surpass his father. What the hell? Exclaimed the toad. What are you doing over there, Jiraiya-sama? Jiraiya smirked from where he was on the red toad's back. It wasn't me who summoned you, said the sage. Really, then, who? Asked the toad. He's on your back, said Jiraiya. Jump down Naruto, let him see you. Naruto let out a sigh and jumped off the toad's back. Who are you? Asked the toad in genuine curiosity. Naruto, replied the young man. Well nice to meet you Naruto, said the toad my name is Gamamachi. Nice to meet you, said Naruto. Jiraiya wore a small frown. He'd hoped the first meeting between Naruto and his new friend would go smoother, but this boy was more withdrawn than he thought. Gamamachi's face a bit and he disappeared in a poof. Naruto scolded Jiraiya. Gamakichi is a very shy spirit. When you act like that, it hurts his feeling, runs him down. That's something you should probably work on. Yeah, maybe, said Naruto, partially ashamed of himself. He seemed to have a knack for upsetting people these days. He slouched his shoulders, tucked his hands in his pockets, and started walking back to Kakashi. Naruto? Came Jiraiya's stern voice do not walk away. Do the jutsu again. Naruto took his hands out of his pockets. He bit his thumb and flashed through the five signs again. 
Summoning Jutsu. Once again a plume of smoke Naruto appeared standing on Gamamachi's back. So summoned me back already? He said. Yeah, said Naruto jumping off his back look Gamakichi I wanted to apologize. I didn't mean to be rude or hurtful. It is nice to meet you. Gamamachi's face lit up. A smile played on Jiraiya's face and he nodded his head. You too, Naruto-san, said Gamamachi. Gamamachi, said Jiraiya, Naruto may be summoning you off and in the next few days, just to get some practice, please bear with us. Not a problem, Jiraiya-sama, said Gamamachi. But we're done with this for the day, said Jiraiya. Okay, see you around Naruto-san, he said. See you later, Gamamachi, replied Naruto. With that the toad poofed away. Okay, said Jiraiya now that we have that down, we need to move on. Naruto I doubt you're even aware of it, but your body houses two chakras. Two chakras? Asked Naruto, a bit dumbfounded. Exactly, two, said Jiraiya. One is the one your body naturally produces, and the other comes from something else. The nine tails, said Naruto, getting a far away look. Yes, said Jiraiya, the nine-tailed fox. And with training you can learn to control it. Naruto didn't seem to like the idea of controlling the nine tails chakra. Don't worry, I'll be here to help you along. The only time I used the nine tails chakra, I lost my eye, said Naruto. I lost control of my body, I don't like it. But the training we're going to be doing, you'll be funneling it into, said Jiraiya, making what you use now, even more powerful. Naruto still seemed a bit uneasy, but nodded. Good, first we need to expend the body's own chakra, said Jiraiya. Naruto nodded. Setting his mouth in a hard line, he built up chakra in his chest just like he had countless times before. Higher style. Fireball he put his fingers to the outer edge of his mouth and exhaled. The fireball was massive, the biggest one he'd ever made. He poured more and more chakra into it draining himself fast, in two minutes almost all his chakra was gone. Excellent, said Jiraiya now try building up more chakra. Naruto did, as he was instructed. No good, he said, it's just the usual chakra. Jiraiya stroked his chin for a minute trying to think of a solution. We'll just have to keep working on it, said Jiraiya, but for now it's getting late, we should call it a day. Naruto nodded and headed back to his team. Hey, Naruto, said Haru, as Naruto approached them. Naruto waved in greeting. Sakura started to jog towards him. How'd it go? She asked learn anything. Yeah, said Naruto, summoning made a new friend. Oh? Asked Sakura. Yeah I'll show you later, said Naruto, and with that the team and their sensei left the training field. Over the next few days Naruto worked on his summoning and controlling the Nine Tails Chakra. He made very little progress, Jiraiya helped as much as he could, but he knew for Naruto to do this, he needed to do it on his own. Damn it, said Naruto, as he dropped to one knee after another failed attempt to build up any of the fox's chakra. I'm not getting anywhere with this, he said, throwing a stone into the river. Naruto, said Jiraiya, you've come as far as you can with this, it's time to move on. What do you mean? Asked Naruto. You see Naruto, said Kakashi from where he was sitting next to Jiraiya. Each thing Master Jiraiya and I have trained you has been to learn something else, he said, with the tree climbing and water walking exercises you learn to control your chakra and release it in a steady amount. Sharingan helped you limit the amount you used but still put it to effect, therefore not wasting any. With the summoning you learn to control greater amounts of chakra. Now we're moving on. Moving on? Asked Naruto, but I haven't even mastered the summoning. Gamamachi only comes out once every three tries. Every time else it's that annoying Gamakichi. You've got it down enough to move ahead, said Jiraiya, but I fully expect you to keep working on the summoning. Fine, it's settled. I'll work on the summoning Jiraiya sensei taught me and learn this new technique. Alright, said Kakashi, this new technique you'll be learning from me. We have two weeks. Say goodbye to the others you won't be seeing for a while. What? Said Sakura what do you mean Kakashi sensei? Naruto needs to focus on his training, said Kakashi. He needs to be away from her. He and I are going into the mountains. We'll be back in time for the finals. Sakura hugged Naruto, letting out a small whimper. Your best, okay? She whispered I'll be waiting for you, come back stronger, okay? Naruto gave her a small smile. It's a promise, he said. Sakura stood in line next to Haru looking around for any signs of Naruto. He and Kakashi had left two weeks ago, Kakashi said they'd be back in time for the finals, but it was starting in 20 minutes. She looked worriedly at Haru who looked back with an equally worried look. What do you think? Ask Haru you think they'll get back in time? I don't know, Sakura Kakashi said they'd be back, but there's no sign of them. She was about to say something else when the crowd around them exploded in cheers. She glanced around and finally looked at the entrance. Walking into the gates was Kakashi and Naruto. Naruto had changed, his hair was even longer and even more shaggy. It reminded her of something, of someone. She slowly recalled a picture she'd once seen. 
A young man in his early twenties, with long shaggy blonde hair wearing a white coat. Naruto looked exactly like the fourth Hokage. In addition to his hair, Naruto's clothes had changed. He was now wearing white pants and a sky blue shirt, his black thong style sandals were the same, and the blue handband on his face was the same too. Hey Naruto. Said Sakura as he walked up next to them. Hey guys, he replied, giving them a small smile. Sorry I'm late. That's alright, you had us worried though, said Haru. Kakashi walked up to his students. Hey guys, sorry I didn't stick around for your training, he said. That's alright, said Haru. I found a master in earth style ninjutsu. I've picked up quite a few new tricks. Just watch me Kakashi sensei, I'll show you how much I've learned. Good, said Kakashi, I know you'll all make me proud. Naruto wore a smug smirk as he watched his teacher walk away. Alright listen up, said the proctor. It wasn't the same proctor they'd had last time. Here, he held up a bracket board. Study it quickly. Haru was fighting Niji, Shikamaru was next fighting Tamari, then it was Naruto against the monster Gara. Sakura was after that fighting Lee, and the last fight was Kankuro vs Shino. Oh no, Naruto, said Sakura. I'll be fine, he said I was hoping for this. Besides we all have new tricks we want to show Kakashi. Haru I know you'll do your best. Haru steeled his face. Right, he said. While Haru and his opponent remained in the grounds, Naruto, Sakura, and the rest of the finalists went into the stands to watch the fight. Naruto and Sakura sat with the rest of the nine rookies. Sakura leaning against him and his arm around her. Naruto hadn't realized how much he'd missed her until the moment he laid his eyes on her walking into the arena. Haru stood across the arena glaring at Niji. This boy had tried to kill a comrade. Haru wasn't going to stand for that. Begin. Said the proctor. Haru pulled the demon wind off his back and flipped it open. The two ninjas charged each other. Naruto pulled his handband from his Sharingan. He watched as each of Niji's chakra enhanced blows barely missed Haru or were blocked by the large shuriken in his hand. Haru flipped backwards as a strike passed over him by inches. He's okay, said Naruto. Niji hasn't hit him yet. Sakura let out a sigh of relief as the two fought up and down the arena. He's gotten a lot better, pointed out Sakura. He has, said Naruto. But all he can do right now is dodge, with Niji's ability to drive Chakra into his body, if Haru takes one direct hit, he's finished. Haru spun under an open palm strike for Niji and passed the shuriken in his hand across Niji's leg. Niji stumbled but. I'm impressed, he said, it's been a long time since I was cut. Haru said nothing as he drew back his arm and hurled the shuriken and flashed through hand signs. Niji dodged the shuriken easily and came up changing. Earth style. Stone shuriken. Yelled Haru. Thousands of square floating rocks rose into the air surrounding Niji. It's over, said Naruto. The first shuriken hit Niji and stopped dead. What? Exclaimed Naruto. Niji began to spin at a high speed surrounding himself in a dome of chakra. What was that? He asked. Rotation, said Tenten to his left. Normally ninja can send bursts of chakra from a certain point in their body. Their hands and feet mostly. Niji however can expel chakra from all over his body. Then he spins at a high speed, making any attack launched against him rendered completely useless. Haru's going to have a tough time getting through that, said Sakura. Remember what Kakashi Sensei says, said Naruto. Even though we're not on the battlefield with him, our teamwork will make him stronger. Have faith in each other, and we will grow stronger, as a team, and, as individuals. Behind Naruto, Kakashi wore a proud smile. There was hope for Naruto yet. Haru's breath was heavy, he poured a lot of chakra into that. It was his second best technique, he was sure he had Niji. Niji's smirk widened. Did you seriously think it would be that easy? He taunted. Haru snatched the demon wind out of the air as it returned, collapsed it, and sheathed it. He glared into Niji's eyes, the veins surrounding them engorged due to the massive amounts of chakra being pumped through them. Face it, said Niji your fate has already been decided, it was your destiny to lose today, it was decided the very moment I became your opponent. I for one believe we make our own destiny, said Haru. Just accept it, said Niji you're a failure. You always have been, and you always will be. You're wrong, said Haru. Enough, said Niji, this ends now. Niji raced at Haru and buried an open palm strike right into the middle of Haru's chest. Haru hit the ground hard, he lay there for a minute before climbing back to his feet. Still think you can change your destiny? Said Niji, fine, I'll show you exactly what happens to those who go against fate. Niji crouched in a low stance. Gentle fist art. 8 trigrams. 64 palms. He charged Haru and struck him with two sharp strikes with his index and middle fingers. Two palms. He hit him with two more four palms. Eight palms. Sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms. Sixty-four palms. Each strike hit Haru directly. Haru stumbled back clutching his chest. I have struck every single one of your chakra points, said Niji this match is over. 
This time it was Harry's turn to smirk. He started flashing through Hans' signs. It's useless. Yelled Niji as he charged. Earth style. Six stone pillars. Shouted Haru. Six pillars of earth rose from the ground surrounding Niji tightly he could barely move, then walls of stone extended out of them attaching to the pillar next to it. Niji looked up to see Haru standing on one of the pillars his arms crossed over his chest. But how? He asked, I blocked off your chakra. Earth began to fall from Haru's body. He encased himself in a layer of earth, said Sakura, amazed. You see, said Haru, you were so caught up in your preachings of destiny and focusing on my chakra points, you failed to notice that the last time I hit the ground, I covered myself in a thin shell of earth. I knew it couldn't be too thick or those eyes would see it. But it was thick enough to guard against your attack, I know all about the Hayuga and their ability to stop the flow of chakra. This is my best technique. Stone spikes from each pillar and wall. I can put a ceiling on this thing too. You so much as move a muscle, these spikes will impale you from 12 different angels. Admit it, you've lost. Niji searched his surroundings looking for any possible means of escape, he quickly found that there was no means, and Hare was right. He'd lost. I yield, he said in a downcast voice. The winner is. Harumuri, said the proctor. The crowd erupted. Naruto and Sakura clapped as well. The pillars and walls sank into the ground, leaving Hare standing in front of Niji. Niji looked tired and ashamed. I guess it wasn't your destiny to lose here, said Niji. But mine. Haru clapped him on the shoulder. Niji said, causing the older man to look at him. Four months ago I never would have even had a prayer of beating you. I was weak and had no confidence in myself. But I learned, we can do anything we set our mind to, if we just believe. Naruto taught me that. Hey, and you should have an easier time of it than me. He let go and began to walk away as Niji stared confusedly at his back. After all, unlike me, he said and looked over his shoulder. You're not a failure. With that Haru left the arena to join his team. A job, said Sakura, pulling Haru into a hug. Yes, well done, said Naruto, clapping him on the shoulder. Haru wore a goofy grin. That was mighty impressive, said Kakashi from behind him, I'm extremely proud of you Haru. The next match is between Shikamarinara and Tamari. Yelled the proctor will the combatants please come down. There was a whirl of wind and Tamari came down from somewhere riding her fan. Moments later Shikamaru walked into the arena, his hand tucked lazily into his pockets. The two opponents faced each other. Begin said Gemma. Tamari was off to the races, charging right at Shikamaru. She leaped into the air and brought the fan down towards Shikamaru's head. When the dust cleared, Shikamaru was nowhere to be seen. Is he hiding? Asked Haru to no one in particular. I dunno, said Sakura looking around the arena. A dark thing went skirting across the ground. A shadow. Tamari rapidly retreated, just as it was about to reach her it stopped. Looks like that's the extent of his range, said Naruto. Tamari smirked at him and drew a line in the dirt with her fan. She looked at him, it was then she noticed there was something different about him. His jacket was missing. She saw something starting to form on the ground, another shadow. She looked into the air. He'd made a parachute out of his jacket, headband, and a kunai. She ran to her left, past the proctor. His shadow stopped and began to retreat. Just as she turned to face him she froze. He got her, said Naruto. Tamari looked around trying to figure out where she went wrong. She saw her mistake. He'd extended his shadow with the jacket and followed her as she fled past the proctor, he then used the proctor's shadow as a stepping stone and caught her. Shikamaru walked them to the center of the arena. He raised his hand. The hell with it, he said I give up. All Naruto's entire team could do was blink in disbelief. What just happened? Asked Haru. I'm not sure, replied Naruto. The crowd began booing. The winner is. Tamari, the boss intensified, getting louder and louder. Shikamaru walked out of the arena and into the stands. Well then, said Gemma, let's begin the next match, Naruto Uzumaki and Gara of the Sand. Naruto stood from his place in the stands and began to head for the arena. He stopped when something hit him in the back. It was Sakura, hugging him from behind. Be careful, she whispered, please be careful and come back to me safe. I will, said Naruto. Promise? She asked. Promise, confirmed Naruto, and reluctantly she let him go. Naruto left the stands and walked into the arena. Gara was already waiting for him. I have to say, I've been looking forward to this, said Naruto. I feel the same, said Gara. When you're ready, begin. Said Genma. Sand began to pour from the gourd driving its way into the ground. I see though Naruto he's using the sand to create more sand for the earth, itself. Naruto pulled his headband from his eye, the Sharingan locked in on Gara, watching his every move. Soon Gara was surrounded by a cloud of the sand from the earth, his own chakra infused sand slipped back into the gourd. Perfect Naruto flashed through a familiar set of hand signs. Higher style. 
Fireball, the jet of fire erupted from his mouth, engulfing the sand. As it died down the crystallized sand crashed to the ground. Ah, ingenious, said Lee in Naruto's abandoned spot. He turned the sand to glass with fire. Naruto raced at Gara. the sand poured from the gourd and attacked Naruto. Naruto dodged through the clouds of shifting sand and delivered a hard right sidekick to Gara's chest. The boy stumbled, it should have knocked him off his feet, but he seemed weighed down by something. Naruto flipped backwards and did a series of back handsprings to avoid the sand that was bearing down on him. He came to a sliding stop and flashed through more hand signs. Higher style. Phoenix Flower Jutsu. The twenty fiery missiles raced at Gara and crashed into his sand defenses. This sand however did not turn to glass. As I thought, that sand has so much of his chakra infused in it that it can't be turned to glass. Hestude and ran at Gara, hurling eight shuriken at him before vanishing from view. He reappeared behind Gara. The sand took a can of the shuriken, Gara turned to face Naruto. Naruto delivered eight punches in quick succession, each strike driving Gara a bit further in the air. He ended the melee with a hard leaping spin kick that should have knocked him unconscious. Gara hit the ground and was left back to his feet by his sand. When he looked back at Naruto, his face seemed to be falling away. It was sand. I understand now Naruto looked down at both his fists, his knuckles were bleeding. He encases himself in sand, like Haru did with the earth. That's why he seems so heavy, he got sand armor. Gara went on the offensive. Clouds of sand streaked towards Naruto, thanks to the Sharingan Naruto was able to read and anticipate each attack. However he was so busy dodging he couldn't attack. He crossed his fingers. Shadow clone another Naruto popped into existence and continued to dodge while the real Naruto vanished from sight. The sand finally pierced Naruto and the clone disappeared, Gara let out a gasp of surprise. However it was cut short when a hard kick collided with the side of his head. Gara was knocked to the ground again. This time when the sand rose him in the air it began to encase him. Soon the sand formed a cocoon around him. Naruto looked at the cocoon for a minute. Then he charged, spears of sand came from the cocoon, stopping Naruto short. He leaped away as he crashed into the ground. He landed on the spears and began to run up them. He drew his two kunai and stabbed the cocoon, it was hard, like a rock. Only one way around this, he thought, and leaped off the cocoon as more spears came from directly underneath him. He raced away from the cocoon and sprinted up the wall, near the top he skidded to a halt. Three hand signs, ox, rabbit, monkey. Air looked back at his sensei. Kakashi sensei said, what is Naruto doing? Kakashi gave him his one-eyed smile. Just watch, said Kakashi. But don't blink. Flashback, okay, Naruto, this technique I'm going to teach you will be your most powerful attack, for now anyway, explained Kakashi. As we're covered so far you learn to channel chakra, use mass amounts of chakra, not waste extra chakra, plus we've built up your speed to an almost inhuman level. This technique requires all that, plus something else. Something else. Asked Naruto. Correct, focus, said Kakashi, the ability to focus all the chakra of the attack into a single point of impact. Watch. Kakashi blazed through the ox, rabbit, monkey signs, and ended up holding his right wrist palm up. For a second nothing happened, then chakra began to actually become visible. It looked like lightning. The lightning blade, explained Kakashi. He turned to a large boulder behind him and slammed his hand into it. The chakra tore a massive crater into the boulder. Whoa, said Naruto. Now start by gathering a large amount of chakra in your hand, said Kakashi. Naruto did as he was instructed and poured almost half his chakra reserves into his hand. Now the signs, said Kakashi, again Naruto obeyed. He held his right wrist, but unlike Kakashi, his palm was down. He felt a jolt of electricity arc between his thumb and middle finger, then the unexpected happened. The chakra that was just starting to take shape, exploded. Naruto was knocked onto his back. Not enough focus, said Kakashi again. Naruto climbed to his feet, flashed through the signs, and built up his chakra. More focus. Said Kakashi concentrate. I am Kansen Naruto was cut off by another explosion. Again he wound you on his back. Damn it. He exclaimed, jumping to his feet. Kakashi opened his mouth to say something, but the look on Naruto's face told him, Naruto was in grindstone mode. He would be out here for four days straight if that's what it took. Heaving a sigh, Kakashi settled against the boulder behind him to read the sound of explosions and cursed his only company. Naruto wiped the dripping sweat from his brow, he'd been at this for three days now, only sleeping when it was absolutely necessary. He did the ox, rabbit, monkey hand signs and built up his chakra in his hand. The electricity arced across his fingers, he focused on the center of his palm. Slowly the lightning grew and grew until he covered his whole hand. Yes. He said and spun around and smashed his hand into the boulder next to the crater Kakashi had made three and a half days earlier. The lightning dissipated, no crater, no nothing it was like it had never been there in the first place. What the? 
He stared at his hand confused. Looks like you've got the first step down, said Kakashi, as he walked up the hill towards Naruto. But remember what I said. Focus at the point of impact. He placed his hand on the boulder this is the point of impact, you have to transfer the energy in your hand to the face of the boulder, and do it without letting the lightning lose any potency or force dot, right, said Naruto. He formed the seals, and built the lightning in his hand. Then turned to the boulder, and drove his hand at it. Halfway there the lightning fizzled out, and Naruto hit the boulder with a curled fingered palm strike, and it didn't feel good. Keep the flow going, and at the last minute add an extra burst of chakra, and drive all the energy into the boulder, said Kakashi. Naruto nodded and tried again. The lightning hit the rock and made a tiny little nick. Damn it. Yelled Naruto. That was closer, said Kakashi. Well you seem to have the general idea, dinner is at 7 if you're hungry, and with that the copy ninja walked back down the hill toward the little inn he and his student were staying in. Yeah, thanks a lot, muttered Naruto. He tried again and again, but even when he tried he failed. One time the nick would get bigger, then the next time, it wouldn't work at all. For five days he tried. Naruto sat on the ground gasping for breath, he was exhausted, more than exhausted. Sweat poured off his body, pooling on the ground. I need a bigger burst of chakra, he said aloud that's all I need. He leaped to his feet, ox, rabbit, monkey. The lightning built up in his hand, he raced at the boulder and drove his hand at it, a split second before his hand hit the boulder he pictured a bolt of lightning shooting down his arm and out his palm. They hit the boulder, the rock resisted for a second and exploded. Yes. Exclaimed Naruto. But now, let's keep working on it, said Kakashi. Then flashback, he gripped his wrist, palm down. Nothing happened for a second, then the lightning began arsing, the chirping ensued. Wow. Said Haru, he's never done that before. It's amazing, his chakra is visible, said Sakura. But what is it, and what is the weird noise? It's a jab, said Guy from next to Kakashi, but this jab is unlike any other. Naruto held his right arm out to his side and sprinted down the wall. It's the only weapon in Kakashi's arsenal he didn't copy from someone else, said Guy. Naruto hit the ground running, racing at Gara's cocoon. It's a technique solely based on the user's speed and ability to focus his chakra at the point of impact, explained Guy. When these two components, speed and focus, reach a certain level the chakra becomes visible and gives off the distinct noise you hear, like birds chirping. Naruto dodged through the sand spears, bringing his arm up in a cocked-like position. It is this sound that gives the technique its name, said Guy. Naruto's hand hit the sand and drove through it, he hit something soft driving partially through it. Tadori. Said Guy, 1000 birds, also known as Lightning Blade. Lightning Blade. Questioned Hair why is that? It's got that name because Kakashi once used it to cut a bolt of lightning in half before it could touch the ground. Answered Guy. The genin were speechless. Naruto gripped what he now knew was Gara's shoulder, the sand began to pour away, revealing Gara his left shoulder torn to shreds. Bam thought Naruto I missed that he let go and leaped away when he saw the crazed look in Gara's eye. Gara's right hand gripped his left shoulder and he pulled it away looking at it in bewilderment. What is this? He mumbled, then realization seemed to hit him blood. It's my blood. He screamed. Naruto readied himself for an attack but faltered when he heard an explosion. He looked to his left where he knew the Hokage and Kazuki had sat. The balcony was covered in smoke. Gara's siblings and sensei joined him on the ground. Edgar out of here, said their sensei. The two obeyed immediately. Naruto faltered, unsure of what to do. He was joined by his own teacher and teammates, with Genma as well. Naruto, Haru, and Sakura said to Kakashi go after those three, stop them, kill them if you have to. But how? Asked Haru, we have no way of knowing which way they went. Kakashi pressed his kunai to his thumb. Summoning Jutsu. He pulled his hand from the ground and there sat a pug-like dog. Pakken here will lead you. Right, said Naruto, led the way Pakken. You got it, replied the dog, and leaped off the three genin hot on his heels. So you sand ninja broke the treaty, said Kakashi addressing the sand sensei, but I can't see the sand doing this on their own, who's helping you? Or are you helping? Don't know, said the sand sensei, and don't care, I already killed one of you. Figured I'd finish off the rest. So you're the one who killed Haig, said Kakashi, the former proctor's body had been found the night before on a rooftop in the eastern edge of the village. The punk you coughed all the time? Asked the sand ninja yeah that was me. Then I think it's only fair, said Kakashi, forming the ox hand sign I return the favor. Naruto stretched his body flat as he leaped between two tree branches following Kakashi's dog. Pakken. The miniature pug had led them at a breakneck pace in pursuit of Gara and his siblings, the result being that they were closing in on the trio fast. It was probably due to the older two sand ninja being slowed by dragging Gara along with them. Naruto looked to his left and right at Sakura and Haru. 
Harry's face was a bit pale, having come out of a fight with Niji, his chakra was down below half, so the discolor in his face was understandable. Sakura on the other hand was looking just fine, a bit red from the insane pace Naruto and Pakin were setting, but other than that she was looking fine. Naruto glanced at their canine companion, he had to admit the animal had impressed him. Its ability to pick up Gara's scent so quickly and then move this fast was definitely something that they could use in the future. Dot hollered Naruto how close would you say we are? The small pug looked over his shoulder. We should catch up to them in roughly five minutes, the pug announced, you better get yourself ready however you need to. Naruto nodded the pug before glancing at each of his teammates. Sakura steeled her resolve, Haru closed his eyes, focusing on replenishing as much of his chakra as possible. Naruto on the other hand began gathering his own chakra in his right arm, fingertip to shoulder joint, just like Kakashi had taught him. The maneuver he was about to attempt could give the jump on their opponents they needed. He flashed through his hand signs. Ox, rabbit, monkey. It was tougher than he thought, charging up Jidori and running through the canopy off the vast forest surrounding the village. He stumbled once, nearly falling to the forest floor, but his quick reflexes enabled him to catch a lower branch and hurtle back into the canopy. Naruto, are you okay? Asked Sakura. Fine, came his short response. It hurt him to be so short and blunt with Sakura, but he had to focus on charging his attack. Look sharp guys, Pakin said. We're almost there. Naruto put all but a small amount of focus into charging his move. Finally when they nearly caught the sand ninja, the telltale noise of his Jidori began. He heard Sakura's sharp gasp, causing him to look back at them. I'm going to launch a surprise attack with my Chidori, he told them, causing them to look at him in concern. It's the only way we can throw them off balance, think about it you know it's true. The other two members of Team 7 couldn't argue with his logic. Naruto led the charge of the three into a large clearing where the San Shinobi were resting. Sakura and Hera remained in the shadow of the trees, while Naruto leaped into the open bearing down on the three wielding his Chidori. Flying through the air Naruto zeroed in on Gara and slammed the Chidori. The impact created a massive explosion and threw a huge dust cloud. When it settled Gara, Tamari and Kankuro all stood facing Naruto who was standing in the middle of a crater. The three had managed to dodge it, barely. Well well, said Kankuro in a condescending tone if it isn't that kid with that crazy eye. Shut up Kankuro, said Gara as he drew himself to full height, the wound in his shoulder was still bleeding, but he seemed to have gained most of his strength back. Uh sure Gara, said Kankuro. But really kid, what do you intend to do to fight all three of us alone? Asked Tamari. As soon as she finished her sentence Sakura and Haru appeared on either side of Naruto. We leave Gara to you, Naruto, said Haru, we'll handle the other two. Oh really, you're gonna handle us? Asked Kankuro we'll see about that. The four shinobi leaped into the air leaving Naruto and Gara to square off against one another. The two shinobi stared at each other, Gara crazed eyes boring into Naruto's mix-matched eyes. Normally no one would dare meet the gaze of Sharingan, Gara, however was so far gone, Naruto's hypnotic eye had no effect on the crazed sand ninja. So you choose to face me? Said Gara in a low tone. I will stop you, said Naruto. I don't care if you act like a demon, I have the real thing inside of me. A demon inside of you huh? Asked Gara. my demon is as real as yours is, and even now that demon seeks blood, it compels me. It cared for me when the rest of my village pushed me away. I was to be the sand village's ultimate weapon, and so when I was still in my mother's womb, my unborn self was fused with the sand sprite Shukaku. However, as my power grew, they all came to fear me, and several attempts were made on my life. You see I killed the woman who gave birth to me, I was born a monster, and I will kill you. That is my purpose, my reason for living lies solely in the killing of others. I don't care if that's what you believe, said Naruto, you will not harm the people of this village. Very well Naruto Uzumaki, said Gara. you are in my way therefore you are my prey. With that the sand carried and Gara's gourd sprang forth at Naruto. Naruto back flipped out of his way as it slammed into where he was standing. While in the air he flashed through his hand signs. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. The massive fireball was the size of a small house and engulfed Gara, setting the field ablaze. He landed and quickly pulled his kunai off his hips. As the large fireball dissipated Gara stood in the center, but he changed, his right arm had become a massive sort of claw. He'd used it as a shield and protected himself from Naruto's attack. Naruto wasted no time in charging his opponent. Gara attacked with his massive arm, driving Naruto several feet back where he rolled across the ground several times. He came with more hand signs. Higher style. Phoenix Flower Jutsu. The 15-minute fireballs raced at Gara, hitting him from all angles. Gara again blocked with his arm. Amity thought jutsu of this level aren't working, I'm gonna have to hit him with Jidori, but, flashback, Naruto gasped and panted as he stared at the rock in front of him. Filed with three small craters. Not bad, praised Kakashi. 
Looks like with all your others you can still use the Chidori three times. Naruto looked at the rock and glared. Hey don't get like that, said Kakashi. It's only because the rest of your chakra is suppressing the influence of the nine tails, and as you get stronger you'll be able to use it even more. What would happen if I tried to use it more than three times? Asked Naruto. Kakashi cocked his head to the side. Well not only would it not work, said Kakashi the chakra used to suppress the nine tails, would rush to fill the void, and you would unleash its power. All in all, very bad things. Then flashback, if I don't hit him with this and do some significant damage I'm going to be at a serious disadvantage, he thought. Gara charged him, bearing down on him with his massive claw. Naruto did a back handspring to evade and threw three kunai as a distraction. Gara simply blocked them with his arm, the sand seemed impenetrable, as if it were made of iron. Naruto knew that if he could get any space between him and Gara, then he'd never be able to use Yodori. He crossed his fingers. Multi-shadow clone the two dozen clones would provide the distraction he needed. They charged Gara, who destroyed half of them in a single sweep of his arm. Ox, rabbit, monkey. He flashed through his hand signs and gripped his bicep to charge the attack. It took longer than he'd had hoped and soon all the clones were destroyed and Gara was charging at him again. Naruto sprinted at him to meet his charge. The two collided and Chidori ripped through Gara's arm. Gara let out a blood-curdling scream and fell to his knees. He was panting, his face contorted in pain. Then it calmed and a sadistic smile split his face seemingly in two. Sand poured from the boy's gourd again, covering his body, twisting it into something perverse. Into the sand demon Shukaku. Then Gara attacked, the sand was so fast Naruto didn't know what was happening until the sand began to snake up his leg, preparing for the sand coffin. Air wasn't sure how long he'd last as he leaped after Kankuro. His fight with Niji had left him low on chakra. He knew he'd have to end things fast, but that thing he had on his back, it was some sort of puppet from what Sakura had said. The little bit he knew about Shinobi who fought with the puppet suggested that they hid a wide array of secret weapons in the puppet's body. Air wanted to end this fight quickly, so he decided to attack with one of his strongest attacks. He flashed through his hand signs. Earth style. Stone shuriken, he murmured. Kankuro looked around him as the countless stone shuriken rose from the ground. Well this should be interesting, said Kankuro. The hundreds of shuriken flew at Kankuro who leaped into the air attempting to escape. He landed a few feet away breathing slightly heavier, a few of the shuriken had hit mostly in the leg and arm. He pulled them out while glaring at Haru, after the last one was removed he straightened and pulled his puppet off his back. So let's see how well you handle this, he said, and with that attacked Haru. The puppet flew at Haru, its ominous clicking noise reaching Haru's ears and instantly annoying the hell out of him. The puppet extended its hand and a blade sprang from its wrist. Haru dove to the left, coming up wielding his trusty demon wind shuriken. He deflected the puppet's next attack and aimed the shuriken at its master. Kenkuro ducked the weapon and attacked again with the puppet. Haru ducked the attack and had to block the other blade the puppet had extended from its other wrist with a kunai. He pushed it away, and the puppet opened its mouth. Three purple balls flew out of it and exploded at Haru's feet, a thick purple smog surrounded him. Damn it, he said. The poison gas engulfed him, blocking Kankuro's view of him. Kankuro let out a throaty laugh, he knew he'd killed that annoying leaf ninja and was going to take his body back to the village to burn. However when the gas cleared away, Haru was nowhere to be seen. Kankuro let out a gasp and began frantically looking around. Damn it, where is he? Growled out Kankuro as his crow puppet dove in and out of bushes looking for the kid. Where? He heard Haru's disembodied voice. Then a hand burst out of the ground and grabbed his ankle, letting something out of a horror movie. Earth style. Headhunter Jutsu, said Haru. Kankuro felt himself sucked into the ground, only his head was left above ground, then he felt something bind his wrists. Crow fell to the ground, useless. Haru burst from the ground in front of him. Well that should take care of you, he said. But just in case, he started making signs again dot earth style. Dome prison a dome arose from the ground and covered Crow. Ignoring Kankuro's curses and threats he gazed around the field, Gara and Naruto were locked in heavy combat when fighting a foe like Gara, Haru knew he'd just be in the way. He raced off to help Sakura. Sakura charged Tamari and aimed a kick at her head. Tamari blocked it with her large fan and pushed Sakura back. Sakura flipped in the air and landed on her feet. She knew thrown weapons were useless against Tamari, having watched Tenten fight her in the prelims. On top of that, Tamari was a good strategist not as clever as Shikamaru, few were, but more clever than Sakura. Sakura was going to have to win this fight through superior ninjutsu. She did, however, have one trick up her sleeve, her jinjutsu. She hadn't had to use it in the fight against Ino, so Tamari had yet to see it. 
The only problem was that Sakura still hadn't mastered it yet, and it took a bit longer than desired to build up the chakra than desired, plus it took heavy taxes on her chakra. So for now she was limited to her water, not that there was any problem with that, she knew several, and they were quite powerful. And, as even more of a bonus, there was a river not too far away. The Mari looked at Sakura with a smirk, confidence evident on her face. Sakura glared at her, she wasn't about to let this girl intimidate her. She dug her feet into the ground, ready for the girl to attack. Tamari drew her fan back and swung hard at Sakura. Wind scythe jutsu. The massive cyclone roared at Sakura, Sakura flashed through hand signs. Water style. Water gun. The two attacks collided and fought for dominance before slowly dissipating. Well, well, said Tamari, it looks like you have some skill after all. Sakura glared at her and charged, making her hand signs. Water style. Water dragon missile. Shouted Sakura. Tamari's eyes grew large as the river behind Sakura seemed to come to life. The water took on the very shape of a dragon and roared at Tamari. Tamari tried to leap out the way, her wind would have no effect on that size. The water crashed into her and slammed her into a tree where she stayed pinned until it died down. She slowly dragged herself to her feet, this pink hair princess had surprised her. She used her fan as a makeshift crutch. Sakura. They both looked to see Haru running towards them, he was pale. He stumbled and fell to his knees at Sakura's feet. Haru, what's wrong? Asked Sakura, keeping an eye on Tamari. Nothing, he gasped out, I came to lend you a hand. Sakura looked down at him, bewildered. He'd beaten Kankuro. He truly had grown. Well I won't say your help isn't appreciated, said Sakura. But are you in the best shape, two fights in one day is a lot for anyone to handle yet alone three. Haru climbed to his feet and steeled his resolve. I'll be alright, he said, I've got enough chakra for one more. Sakura looked at him wearily, but knew that this was her best chance to finish off Tamari and go help Naruto like she wanted to. Alright, she said. I'll attack her, you look for an opening, and use yours, hopefully it will be enough to take her out. Hera nodded and turned to face off against Tamari. Tamari attacked with her wind scythe jutsu, the cyclone hit where they were throwing a massive dust cloud. Haru and Sakura leaped to either side, Haru started charging and making his hand signs. Do slow. Yelled Tamari and threw three shuriken. Haru was so concentrated that he didn't dodge. The three weapons hit him in the chest. Dropping him to the ground, Haru. Shouted Sakura before glaring at Tamari. You'll pay for that bitch. She started flashing through signs faster than she even had before. Tamari smirked, she wasn't about to be hit by the same again. She began to leap out of the way. Terra gripped her when she found out she couldn't anchor her to the earth. She looked down and saw two hands sticking out of the ground. Now Sakura. She heard someone say. Water style. Water bullets. Screamed Sakura. She slowly advanced on the sand genin, pounding her with heavy shots. Soon she fell unconscious. Sakura dropped her hands and let out a bit of a sigh. Haru popped out of the ground and collapsed, completely exhausted. Haru yelled at Sakura and dropped down next to him. I'm, I'm okay, he murmured go help Naruto. I know you want to. With that Haru passed out. Akin. She yelled. Kakashi's ninja hound leaped from the cover of the trees. What is Sakura? He asked. Then you look after Haru while I go and give Naruto a hand. She asked the ninja hound. Sure Sakura, answered the pug. You just have to be careful. Sakura nodded at the dog and leaped off to help Naruto. This is bad, thought Naruto, as the sand snaked up his leg. This is really bad. His only hope was that maybe this was sand from the ground not sand from Gara's gourd. He ran through his hand signs. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Shouted Naruto putting his first two fingers to his mouth he exhaled, covering the sand in a huge ball of fire. He put as much of his chakra as he dared into it. As the flame died down, Naruto saw that this was indeed sand from the earth. Drawing a kunai he stabbed the glass, shattering it. He leaped back doing a back handspring and landed on one knee. He had several cuts in his leg now. Naruto. He heard a female cry from his left. He turned to see Sakura running at him. She raced to his side and squared off against Gara, who was recovering from his failure. Sakura, what are you doing here? He demanded, not remembering to look at Gara. Before she could answer him, Naruto was hit in the side by Gara's arm, which had somehow managed to extend from where he was. Naruto flew several feet before landing hard on his side and rolled to his back. Giant sand storm. Shouted Gara and gave a great exhale. Sand flew from his mouth right at Naruto. Sakura, however, at the last minute leaped in the way, taking the full blast of it. After the wind died down she fell to her knees and then onto her side. Ara looked shocked, why had that girl saved him? It didn't make sense to him. She should live for herself not others. Naruto watched Sakura fall in slow motion, a vision of Sasuke came racing back to him. Flashback, Naruto uncrossed his arms from over his head. 
He had felt no pain, in front of him, Sasuke stood his arms out wide. Those that had been meant for him, were now in Sasuke's chest, and arms. Slowly the Achiha turned to look at him. You should see your face, he said, you look like a total loser. With that the Achiha fell to the ground coughing trying to clear his lungs of the blood that was quickly filling them. Then flashed back, no. Thought Naruto no please not again. He leaped to his feet and ran to Sakura's side. Sakura, Sakura. He gently shook her trying to get her to look at him. Slowly she looked at him, her eyes unfocused. Naruto? She asked looking confused what happened. You took the full brunt of that attack, he said why. I had to, she explained, you mean too much to me. With that the girl fell silent, her eyes closing. Sakura. Sakura. Screamed Naruto. Tears stung at his eyes. Behind him he heard Gara's deep throaty laughter. He wiped around tears flying. You just shut the hell up. He screamed. His emotions were all over the place. Gara charged at Naruto. Naruto stood over Sakura intent on protecting her. Suddenly Gara seemed to slow down. He swung at Naruto, his movement seemed sluggish. Naruto ducked the swing and hit Gara with a strong uppercut, knocking him on his back. What's going on? He pondered out loud. He was so caught up in his wonder that he didn't see Gara's next blow coming. He saw it at the last second and ducked. It caught him on the top of his head tearing his headband off. It fell to the ground in front of him. His reflection was in the metal protector, what he saw caused him to start. His Sharingan had changed, it had been level 2. Now it was a level 3, that's why he'd been able to read Gara's physical attack. Gara charged him, so Naruto left the headband where it was and ducked under the swing, then he leapt over another one and flipped out of the way of a third one. Gara, growing more and more frustrated, let out a furious growl. Suddenly, Gara exploded. Sand flew in all directions. Naruto covered his face with his arms. After the dust cloud died down he gasped at what he saw. Standing in front of him was the sand spirit Shukaku. Crap, he said I've only got one chance, I hope something crazy happens. He slashed his thumb with his kunai. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, sheep. He slammed his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. He felt his chakra drain, and he was in a huge cloud of smoke. He felt as if he was being shoved into the sky. When the smoke cleared he found himself standing on top of a massive red toad. He stepped back as the toad shifted looking around. Behind Naruto still lying down was Sakura. Naruto knelt down and held her tight to him, keeping her from falling. Hey, where the hell am I? Demanded the toad. Who the hell summoned me? I did, said Naruto from atop his head. And who the hell are you? Demanded the toad. Naruto Uzumaki, he replied yourself. I am Chief Gamabunta. Said the toad. Okay chief, I hate to bother you, but I could really use your help right now, said Naruto. Gamma looked at Shukaku. I see, said the toad almost thoughtfully, the Shukaku eh? Gara suddenly popped out of Shukaku's forehead. Play possum jutsu, he said, and fell asleep. Suddenly the Shukaku let out a piercing shrieking laugh. It's so good to finally be released, it exclaimed. That's not Gara's true voice, said Naruto bewildered. No, replied Gamma. That is Shukaku, the medium is asleep, to break this, we have to wake him up. And how do we do that? Asked Naruto. We gotta hit him, suddenly Shukaku put his hand on his stomach and reared back. It's Shukaku's air bullet, kid, do you know any fire jutsu? We may be able to turn this to our advantage. The couple, replied Naruto, what do I need to do? Just aim for right in front of my nose, said Gamma, I'll take care of the rest. Naruto flashed through his hand signs. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. He reared back and blew hard, at the same time Gamma let a spew of oil fly from his mouth. The fire ignited the oil, causing a huge stream of fire. At the same time, Shikaku let go of his air bullet. The two jutsus collided. The fire style absorbed the wind style, blustering its power. Shukaku was enveloped in a great geyser of flame. He let out a scream as it scorched his skin. Gamma used the distraction to close the distance. Oh that really hurt. He screamed when the fire finally died down. Somehow the fire had not reached Gara. Naruto, leaving Sakura on Gamma's back and asking him to watch out for her, leaped from Gamma's back and landed in front of Gara. one swift punch, and Gara woke. What? exclaimed Shukaku, what I just got here. Shukaku disintegrated into sand. Gara and Naruto both fell out of the sky, landing hard on the ground. Naruto dragged himself to his feet and glared at Gara, who was mimicking him. Why? Asked Gara. I don't understand, why would you do this for anyone but yourself? Because they saved me, said Naruto from turning into you. Gara's face looked awestruck. He dropped his aggressive stance and stared at Naruto. Suddenly he was joined by his siblings intent on killing Naruto. As they stepped forward Gara's voice stopped them. Damari Kankuro, he started before dropping to his hands and knees. That's enough, it's over. They hesitated for a minute before picking him up. Yeah, okay Gara," said Kankuro. 
the three siblings leaped off, leaving their leaf opponents far behind. Naruto raced to Sakura who the chief had just laid on the ground before disappearing. He fell to his knees unable to hold his own weight. Sakura, he called out. She stirred slightly and looked at him, they shared a smile, a real smile, they were alive. The Kashi leaped through the trees looking for his team, they'd been gone for three hours. The battle in the village was over. The leaf shinobi had driven out the invading sound and sand ninja, however the third had lost his life fighting Orochimaru. He was beginning to get worried, he had confidence in their abilities, but he wondered if he'd made a mistake sending Naruto after Gara. Just as he was about to give up hope, he stumbled across a clearing. Inside sat three people and a dog. Naruto, Sakura, Haru, he said, landing a few feet away. There you are. They all three turned and looked at him, each was banged up. Sakura had bruises on most of her body, her hair was a mess, and her face was pale. Haru was pale, sickly pale, Kakashi knew it was due to chakra exhaustion, and he was favoring his left leg. Naruto looked the worst, his clothing was torn to ribbons, and his headband was missing. His shirt hung off his body, exposing the must of his upper body, his torso was covered in wounds and blood. Blood was matted in his golden hair, and he was limping. You've all been through hell, so that makes what I have to tell you even harder. He said the Hokage is dead, and Sakura, and so are your parents. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.